another very interesting tangent which is relevant to us and it is in my notes one of the most famous claims of Jewish messianic fame was a person born and raised and died in Muslim land spoke Arabic fluently and he was a member of the Ottoman peoples meaning a citizen if you like even though the concept of citizenship is modern but uh, and this is the famous rabbi known as Shabtai Tzvi Shabtai Tzvi Shabtai Tzvi was born in Ottoman lands in the 16th uh, 17th century 16 something he died in don't quote me 17th century uh, and Shabtai Tzvi was a famous rabbi who began to have a larger and larger following and eventually claimed to be the Messiah. And his followers increased and he began demanding more and more things. A lot of problems happen. He's a very interesting figure. Uh, he intermingled with European kings and with the Sultan Mehmed IV, the famous Ottoman Sultan, uh, until finally his demands became so ludicrous and political and a long, making a long story short, but he began to be political. And when he began to be political, the Sultan imprisoned him. And eventually his followers clamored and whatnot. So the Sultan decided to execute Shabtai Tzvi. And he called him to his palace and he said, your penalty is death, but I shall forgive you if you convert to Islam. Now I'm not arguing that was good or bad, I'm just telling you what happened. Whether that was good or not, it's not my business. That's what the Sultan Mehmed IV decided. If you convert to Islam, you are forgiven. Faced between these, Shabtai Tzvi decided to convert to Islam, which caused a great crisis amongst his followers. Because if he's the Messiah, <laughs> what are you going to do now, right? It caused a huge crisis. He had thousands of followers and they all thought that he's going to be the Messiah, bring the kingdom of David back, this and that. And lo and behold, he embraces the Shahada in public. He takes off the turban of the Yehud and he wears a big Ottoman turban. MashaAllah Tabarakal. In those days, your clothing would tell you apart. He had the clothing of a rabbi. And in the presence of the Sultan, he took off his rabbi cloak and he wore the Ottoman, I'm not joking, it's not a joke, he literally, he wore the Ottoman turban and he said the Shahada and he said he's a Muslim. What are his followers going to do? Massive chaos, confusion. Some of them, I think the majority, uh, ended up either saying this is a ruse or a tactic or converting with him. A small group left him. So this turned out to be one of the most bizarre conversions in Islamic history because what happened was his followers, in fact, he himself became half Jew, half Muslim. He observed Ramadan, but he observed the Sabbath as well. He read some Quran, but he also read the Hebrew. So he had this new thing that came about and his followers were called Don Me Don Me which was a derogatory term by the, the Ottomans by the, the Muslims of the time Don Me there is no English equivalent it's it, there's no English equivalent it means convert but not with a positive connotation like a traitor convert like there is no English word, a convert, but not like a positive convert. You've turned your back and left and you've come, but eh, we're not like a big question mark, you know, that type. This is the term that who gave them the Muslims of the time. They weren't happy with this guy and his followers too weird. Eventually the Sultan, of course, and by the way, initially was very happy, gave him a massive check here, massive money. You became a Muslim. Good. Eventually it turned out he's still observing. Jewish rituals and customs. So he lost all favor. He was exiled. He died in exile. His followers who are now outwardly Muslim, inwardly continue to be what are called crypto Jews. Okay. And their 
numbers increased, 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 and they are still around in Turkey, the Donme. They're still around in Turkey. Now, to make the plot worse, to make the soup thick here, there's a lot of conspiracy theories. We Muslims love conspiracy theories. And the problem with conspiracy theories is they're so ludicrous, except for the ones that are true. This is the problem. And you can't really tell the true from the falsehood until Allahu A'lam. So, conspiracy theories are a problem. Nonetheless, I'm, I'm narrating the conspiracies. I'm not endorsing them, please. Okay? So when Fox News comes and quotes, misquotes me those 10 seconds, please go back to this clip that I'm saying here right now that I'm simply narrating so that you should be aware I am not endorsing the conspiracy theories at all. The conspiracy theories that were started from that time frame and they lasted up until today they are there. The religious Muslims of the Ottoman lands said these people are Zanadiqa. What are Zanadiqa? Crypto Muslims who want to destroy Islam. They're not real, they want to harm Islam. And they hate Islam, but they pretend to be Muslim. And the Donme became rich and powerful in a number of cities in particular the one city where Shabtai Zvi died. And at the turn of the century a hundred years ago, and inshallah, 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 in this year, I hope to give you a very academic lecture about the history of 1919, because that is one of the main turning points of our history, uh, 1916 and 1919. In 2016, I gave a talk in my Memphis Masjid, 2016, uh, 1916 in the shaping of the Muslim world. Now it is 2019, and I want to give a part two to that. Inshallah, make dua, Allah gives me time and whatnot. It's just a matter of time and preparing the lecture and slides, but it's uh, 1919, you need to know this date. Um, around this time, 1919, around this time, a little bit before and after, around this time, a group called the Young Turks were formed. And the Young Turks were a very, very secular, anti-religious groups of Turks who were keen on abolishing the Khilafah and bringing about a Turkey that was secular in nature. Now, what I'm about to tell you is true. Many of the leaders of this movement were from in particular a very very dashing yet cruel intellectual yet heartless man called later called Mustafa Kemal later called Ataturk. Ataturk is from the Donme, this is a fact. Now you go figure what is conspiracy and what is history. You go figure what is true and what is false. I'm simply telling you the perception about the motives of the Donme. And then I will tell you factually, Ataturk hated Islam. Ataturk mocked Islam. He was not a believer in Islam at all. And it is very clear that he considered Islam to be something that caused his people and nations to be backward. And if he wanted to, if he was able to, he would ban the religion. He did enough damage to the religion as it is. As you know, he banned, he shut down the madrasas, he abolished the Khilafah, he abolished the, the, the Grand Mufti, role of the Grand Mufti. Uh, he made the court system secular, got rid of all of the Sharia. He made the Quran to be recited in Turkish during the Salah. The Adhan was recited in Turkish, not in Arabic anymore. Instead of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, they said something in Turkish. That was his whole point to make everything Turk. So, Ataturk is from the Donme. You understand where conspiracy theories come from. And not just him, but many of those who followed him. Do you understand how this is relevant to the Dajjal? It's not coming out of there. Shabtai Tzvi claimed to be Messiah. And all of this and then these things.